when you guys were releasing those those compilations, was it was it taking off? I mean, were you guys making noise? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well, from there that that's when we we came together and we were like, um, it was Mr. D Productions. Okay. And then from there we were like talking about it and we're like, all right, you know, we gotta, you know, we're going legit with a record label. Right. All right, boom, 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 and then we're like, all right, Southland Records, and that's when Southland started. And Southland, Southland made noise. Right. Southland Re Records made noise. How long were you there for before you ventured out on your own? I was there for like probably 10, 10, 15 years. Really? I carried that label for for about 10 years, bro. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You said I carried that label. Yeah, no, honestly, I'm just being honest, you know, because a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people come and go in the okay. label. A lot of people came and went, came and went, came and went, came and went. And I, I stuck, you know, I stuck to it. I stayed loyal to it, so... Right, right, okay. Yeah, I was That'll representing, work. yeah. Uh, uh, your first album drops. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was the name of that one? The Same Streets. The Same Streets. And how did that do for you? That one did good. Yeah. And, and back then, digital wasn't even... Right. It wasn't even out yet. When my first album dropped, I think it was, you know, apenas estaba naciendo, you know? So, we used to get hard copies, you know, back in the days. And, right. And it, it's the same story, out the trunk, selling them out the trunk, you know? Yeah. People will come at me and like kids, everybody. Hey, uh, how much? Ten bucks. Hey, I only got three bucks. Fuck it. Then boom, I only got five. Whatever they had, boom, boom. You know. Wow. Boom. And I still have the notepad, a notebook in my pad, both pages, columns, each line, what I sold, for how much. Boom, boom. I mean, a bunch of pages. I, on the streets, I made, I made, you know, like I said. The whole Chicano rap thing right. was fresh. Okay. Now, uh, um, who were some of your producers? Uh, uh, let's just say on the first compilation that you were part of. Do you remember? On the first ones, it was... Uh, I know we had Kryptonite. Shout out to, to MC Kryptonite because he was the first one that they okay. would, I actually worked with as a producer. Um, other than that, it, it was a lot of Jack Beats, man. It was a lot of, you know, no, no, no really... No one really producing. It was just like I got this beat, like we'll a sample. rap over your ass sample. Or... Okay. And I know there was there was a lot of there was a lot of dudes that would send in beats, like producers. Hey, you know what this might be, but I I never really paid attention, like, because I wasn't behind the scenes right there. I wasn't like, they weren't sending them straight to me. Right. Yeah, they were sending them to the label. So then you know they'll be like, hey, uh, I, you know I got this song, I got this song, I, you know, or else I would have been giving shout outs to like producers okay. and all that. You know? You, you know, one thing I never, I don't think I ever asked D, uh, was there any females signed to um, um, to Southland? Yeah. When I was there, I don't think there was any. No. No. Huh? No. Okay. And and uh, now let me ask you this: You still remember the first time you took the stage? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I got a story for that too. Sure, man. It was Santa Barbara. Big shout out to Santa Bruta, man. That's my second home. Right there. Santa Bruta. Yeah, Santa Bruta, East Side, man. What's up? They're my family over there, man. They, I love them. Shout out to Sad Boy. Get out. Free Sad Boy. So, um, we did. That was our first show out there. Okay. And I remember uh, they're like, hey, uh, go buy. You got to buy some wardrobe. Our first show. Yeah, yeah. Well, what am I going to wear with my first, you know, first show? So we go down to San Fernando Mall, and it was a People's, I think it was People's or Casanova store. And I bought a Guayavera, bro. No shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> My wife was like, uh, yeah, I guess, you know. So I got a I got clown for that. For real? But I, I thought I was like, yeah, I'm going to look fresh, you know. So I go up there. But in the beginning, there was like, there, I don't know if people still do that. There was like 50 motherfuckers on stage when we were performing. Really? Yeah, everybody would do that. And back, you know, when it started, everybody wanted their homies. So, they're like 30 fools on stage and we're rapping. And then when it's my part, I'm one of the shortest ones. So, you can't even see me when I'm rapping. And I, I still got video of it. Wow. I got video of the first show wow. out there at a high school. Did you guys have more people on stage than off stage? Yeah. <laughs> no, that was that was pretty packed. Back then, the shows were packed. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, you know, it's funny because one thing I will say that... DJing for high C or quick and all those guys we had security get the fuck off the stage yeah. that was it yeah. that, if you ain't performing get the fuck yeah. off the stage no over here everybody and, and I respect that not yeah. to you what because many times when you get so many people they want to stand in front of the DJ and nah dude get the fuck out of here bro 
you know. We we did uh we did uh we've been we've been to Japan a couple of times. Okay. And one of the time every time I go, you know, I'll take a couple of my boys, you know, yeah. let's go, let's go, let's go. And there was this one time when we went and one of the dudes, he was just there to take pictures. Like, ah, oh, you're gonna be the one taking pictures. End of the night, every show, he was in front of us doing this and <laughs> and we're, hey, what the fuck? So we're all fighting on stage with him and you know, and he's he's over here doing this, trying to I'm like No pictures. No pictures, nothing. And I'm like, dude, you you know, you you don't even rap, you don't do anything. Like at least dance, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, one thing I will say this. I will say this, and this is not a put down. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what the fuck it is, but I met a lot of Chicano rappers, okay? And I met guys that, oh, that's my homie. That's like my backup right there. Yeah. Like anybody wants to throw putazo, yeah. that's the dude right yeah. there. Three months later, this guy will hit me up. Hey, man, I'm rapping now, homie. Yeah. You get a yeah. lot of those dudes, yeah. bro. Like, okay. I, I know, I know a few of them. Calm the fuck yeah. down, bro. Yeah. You know, stay in your lane, yeah. throw some putazos, you yeah. know? But they want to rap yeah. because they want a little bit of that shine. Yeah. You know, and I don't, I don't want to discourage them, but here's my thing. If, if you're not good, you're not good. Yeah. You know. But but you'll be, you'll be amazed, though. Some of these dudes, they don't get it. They don't get it. I don't know if they're tone deaf or some. Well, no les dijeron, but <laughs> you know what I mean? They or, don't, or titiri. Yeah, they don't get it. Like, homie, you know, a, a million people telling you, you can, you know. Yeah, calm the fuck down. Calm down. Yeah. But but that's what happened a lot in, I think, that with the whole Chicano rap thing. Because it was hot, and I think at, at the time they were like, oh, this is a market right here. This is what's next. Yes. And like you said, everybody and their mama, yeah, oh, I'm a rapper too. They, they seen that little shine you start and get, and then, oh, I'm a rapper too, you know? And I think, it's, it's, uh, I apologize for, for cutting you no, off. No, no, But I have to say this. I think that that's probably... And I say probably because I don't know mm -hmm. what might have fucked up this yeah. whole Chicano rap genre that it was over flooded with yeah. people that really had no business rapping. You know, I read a quote and I, I hope I, I don't butcher it, but it says something like, I miss the days when guys that couldn't rap didn't. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. I think there was a lot of guys that just said, fuck it, I'm going to rap. I could rap. I could rhyme cat with hat. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And a lot of these dudes, uh, they, a lot of, they had, a lot of their fans were girls. Because they would come out like, oh, I'm a pretty boy. I can't rap, but I'm pretty. So they'll, they'll have a fan base with girls, you know what I mean? Right, so right. from there, they're like, yeah, well, I'm the shit, you know, I'm the shit, yeah. I'm the shit. But it's like, nah, food, sit your ass down. Or if they can't know? rap, they'll take off their shirt or something. Yeah, something mm. like that. Yeah. yeah, okay. Anyways, so now, um. You're working with Mr. D, Southland Entertainment, Are you, but you said it wasn't called that, that back then. How many albums would you say you did total with him before you decided to depart? With Southland, I did three albums. Okay. Three albums. Now, was, solo albums? Or yeah. Does that include all compilations? No, it, it was like probably like 200 compilations and like... Wow. No, nah, not that many, but a bunch of them and three solo albums. So it was the same streets. And then I brought back... Uh, second time, I brought Sleepwalking. Okay. And then the third one was Eternal Sleep. Yeah. And Which one out of those three would you say was your best one that uh, you like personally? Same Streets. Okay. The now, first one. The, oh, why the first one? It was raw. It was just, it was like I said, the hunger was there. It was raw. It was, So know. is it safe to say second and third one you weren't really that no, hungry? No, no, no. It, it was. Second one, I try to make it more like, I try to take more control over like, ah, right, let me produce. Actually, the second one was DJ Fabe. From Lighter Shit of Brown, you okay. know, and rest in peace to DWTX, man. Lighter Shit of Brown, okay. he's he's a good homie. Um, he produced Sleepwalking, okay. so it, it was more because the same street was raw, like you know, a lot of samples in there. I had Frank V in there. Oh, shout out to Frank V. Ever si aparece? Uh. I know, I know. <laughs> he's got to he's got to appear sometime. Yeah, you know, believe me, once he appears. He'll be here. Yeah, yeah he'll yeah. be here because I've been knowing Frank for fucking years. Yeah, right? yeah, so, I know him for a long time, though, man. So, so that it was that album, uh, and then the third album, it was it was a lot of samples, también. But it was with every with every album, you know, it's like everything with time. You right. practice, you get, you know, you get better, you get better, you get better. Two questions for you, okay? Who do you think, in your opinion, is the best Chicano rapper so far to have done it? Sleepy Malo, by far. Sleepy Malo by far. Number two. Number two that, that's done it, done it. I would say... 
I would say probably Little Rob. Little Rob, okay. I mean, he's 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 out there, you know. Yeah. Cause cause then again, like you you get the, like Baby Bash has done a lot of stuff, right. but I don't know if he's considered. Okay. Chicano rap, you know. Okay. But I know that Little Rob has done a lot of stuff out there, like that's gone. Okay. You know. Uh, um. Um. Another one I was gonna say was uh. 